Go on sound. Can you guys hear me now? Everything looks good on my side. I'm waiting for you to say thumbs up if there's sound, thumbs down if there's no sound. Can you hear me? Yeah. Going live with no sound. Mm. Mm. Yay! We have sound. Good morning, beautiful people. We are starting all over from scratch because y'all could not hear me. Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Kupada Shmagia and this is how I do things. The show where you send me your questions and I'll let you know how I would do things. Now, I can take it as entertainment or use it as advice. Take it, don't take it. Use it, don't use it at all. Listen, do with it what you will because me, I'm no professional. No professional whatsoever. So I'm just letting you know what I would do if I was in your shoes. We had no sound and now we have the sound. The sound is back. Let's see who's live with us because I'm live from Johannesburg, South Africa. It is 7.36 and I have ladies joining us from everywhere. Yes, doing the victory dance for the sound. Victory dance for the sound. Kaletang, let's see for Ayanda's here. Um... I think I'm gonna say this right, right? Tambuzai, let me know if I'm saying it right. Sport, Joy, Dibuwa, we have Ntabi, Sylvie, Koparno, hello, Bito. Joanna is here, Wendy, Letabo, I think I said that. Tris, um, Tembeli, thank you guys all for letting me know if the sound is there. I love seeing the thumbs up and the victory dances along with me. Raquel Nomonde, um, uh, Kensiwe is also here. Prudence, Figi, Lesi, Badi. Kalaleta, Vongai, so many of you here with us. Thank you so much for joining. Rebecca, the birds outside are also joining us. We Chocos also here, my cousin's name, and Nisi. Thank you so much for joining. If you are first timer in the morning party, do let us know. We want to welcome you and embrace you. Let me give you a hug. Let me hug you. Okay. I can hug you on the internet, but not in person. So take it, take it, take it. Smell me, take it, breathe in my essence. You know, hug me, hug me. All right. <laughs> every single year, we know this. Every year, we start saying that new year, new me. These flipping birds. It's okay. We love nature. New year, new me. Every year, we start the year so enthusiastic. We're just like, this year is actually going to be my year. This year is going to be the year where things finally happen for me. We set new goals, we decide on new habits, we we are we challenge ourselves. This year I'm going to start with a seven-day fitness challenge or a 30-day fitness challenge. I'm going to do a fast, I'm going to do all of these things. And we have such hope and ambition for the new year and we believe in ourselves and so we should because the new year is the ultimate restart. It is the ultimate restart for your life. Every single year presents the biggest opportunity. You know, every time people are just like, new month, new opportunities, new week, new opportunities, but a new year, the ultimate. And every year we get into it saying, this is the year that I'm going to make it. But we do this every year. We really do every single year. We get in new goals, new New Year's resolutions, new ambition. I'm so excited. New year, new me. I'm leaving my baggage behind. I'm leaving all the toxic people behind. I'm leaving things behind. I'm going, I'm going. I don't want anything of the things that I had last year. I want something new. But it happens every year. And year on year, people set New Year's resolutions. And by February, statistics say that over 80% of people have already forgotten or given up on the New Year's resolutions. It's only been a week of the new year, and many people have already rethought their New Year's resolutions, thinking, maybe, maybe I don't want that thing. No. Maybe, no, I actually think, maybe, mm, maybe not that one. Let me rethink and re-strategize this thing, all right? That's how most of us feel by, by the end of the first week. So how do we stay motivated? How do we stay on track? You know, 2020, it jolted us. It jolted our systems. We've never had a year like this. The last time a year like this happened was literally 100 years ago. And something like this hasn't happened in a long time. And I doubt that anything like this will happen again in our generation. 
people who were alive during this, during that time, are very, very old. And they could have been babies. Or just, there's nobody who's ever been alive during that time. So, what, it taught us so many things, 2020. And going into 2021, there are things that we can learn from 2020, bring them into 2021, and rebrand ourselves. Become whole new people in the new year. This is the last episode of the New Life, New Me, New Year, New Me series. And this day, I want to show you the eight things that 2020 has taught us and how we can use those things to rebrand ourselves in 2021. Are you all ready in the chats? Are you ready to join me? So who's new around here? We have the table who's new. Welcome. And we also say welcome to Faith. Welcome to Fikile saying receive. Faith is the first time and welcome to the morning party. Hope that you'll be staying. Um, I'm so happy I said your name right, Tambuzai. I'm so happy. <laughs> and for everybody else who's also first timers, thank you so much for joining and thank you for being here with us. So let's get into those eight things. What what, what are the eight things that we've learned from doing doing? Because it was a nonsense year. It was nonsense. It was of a year. Of a year. Of a year. But what can we learn from 2020 to take it to 2021 and to make us whole new people? Number one, the first thing that we learned is what we have control over and the things that we don't have control over. There's this popular saying. It says, change the things that you can and let go of the things that you can't. It sounds like such a cliche, but it is very true. 2020 really taught us what we have control over and the things that we really don't have control over. We couldn't get control over the pandemic. It was happening around the world. It was happening all over us. However, we had control of ourselves. We had control of our personal environments. If one thing that 2020 taught us is there's a very big line, sisters. Beyond this line, you have no control. And over this line, you have full control over that. We also had full control over our perspective. Some people, when the pandemic started and the lockdown started, they were just like, oh, this is the worst year ever. Hide me. And others were just like, this is my opportunity to change my job. This is my opportunity to work on myself. I've been wanting to work out from home. I've been wanting to start a business. I've been wanting to write a book. I've been wanting to do crafts. They jumped into it because their perspective, they knew that I have full control over my perspective, so that's what I'm going to use. So how do you then take that and change yourself and change your brand in the new year? You take that knowledge of what you can change and what you can't. Look at yourself and the things that you can change in your world and say that, you know what, I have control, control over myself. How people know me, what I do with my life, and what am I known? What am I known for? My brand. I'm going to take control of that and move forward. Number two is the fact that you can press the restart button at any time you want to. I saw people quit their jobs during a pandemic when people were losing their jobs. People resigned and started their own businesses. And at the end of the year, they were making more income than they were making when they were in employment. Crazy, mind blowing. <laughs> craziness but that's exactly what people were doing they were just like you know what actually this year this pandemic this lockdown being forced to work from home has really showed me that i like working from home i like having control over my time but i don't like this job or maybe i actually like something else more than i like this job or maybe that you know what i've been denying myself my passions my passion i need to get into my passion and thrive to actually make it work and because people got into the habit of managing themselves managing their own time and working from home they were just like you know i can start this business i can i can actually write a book i can actually start a youtube channel or a podcast and I, i'll make this work so many people did that in 2020 and going into 2021 and you look at all these people who did that how can you do that too for yourself even if this pandemic subsides you still have the lessons from 2020 that I can press the restart button anytime I want to. Because midway through the year, people changed everything. People changed careers. People decided, I actually want to be a stay-at-home mom. I didn't know that I loved staying at home with my kids. Other people were just like, I didn't appreciate teachers until today. I appreciate them now. So many things change and people press the restart button in the middle of the year. So if it doesn't work out for you so far, 2021 is just like a nonsense year as well. Press the restart button whenever you want to. You don't have to wait until 2022. Why? You don't have to. Number three is that people learn to slow down. We're just like, stop the loading. 
back up. People stopped. We stopped and we just realized the things that are actually really important. We live in a get up and go world, right? So this get up and go world is like, get up, wake up, go. Where are you going to? Do you even want to go there? We're just in the habit of getting up and going. Especially if you live in a city. We live in a big city and the city is extremely busy. People who come from other sides of the country, people especially who come from the coast, they're just like, Job is busy, man. Everybody's just trying to move all the time. So instead of getting up and going, you ask yourself, and like, yeah, guy, where am I going? I actually don't even want to go there. So why? Why must I go? Bird. So why must you go? 2020 taught us to slow down. And just because things are starting all over again in 2021 doesn't mean that we have to go at the same pace. Slow down the game. It's your game. You run the game. So when the ball is in your court, slow down the pace. Slow down the pace. Tell everybody else to slow down. Make them work at your own pace. You know what happens when you slow down? When you slow down, you get to see the details. You become more conscious. You become more intentional about what you're doing. Instead of just going all the time, missing out on the important things, missing out on opportunities that you had, and actually not even enjoying the entire process, you get to slow things down and go at your own pace. Number four is that 2020 taught us to focus on the important things because that's what really matters. When you're on a hospital bed on a ventilator, there's certain things that are just not going to even count for you in that moment. They're just not. You're going to think of family. You're going to start praying if you've never prayed before. You're going to think of God. And you're going to think of money in a weird way. Your perspective on money will change. That it's not about the money, actually. It's about the comforts and the freedoms and the things that money allowed you to do. And to be honest with you, some of those things don't even need money. You can get those things without the money. So your perspective on chasing money changes. And your perspective comes to what am I trying to achieve? What lifestyle am I trying to achieve? Did I really enjoy my life? Did I afford myself the freedom that I wanted in my life and the experiences that I wanted in my life? Because it's not about the money, it's about the experience. And sometimes money can buy you those experiences. So your, your view on wealth then starts to change. So what are the important things in 2021 that you need to focus on? Your family, prayer, God, and the experiences that you create. And yes, money does allow you to experience certain things that money can't. So your perspective changes. So in 2021, you make the decision that never let go of the important things. Every day you used to wake up and you're gone. But you slow down. And this is why I like my journal. This is my journal this morning. So instead of waking up and going, my first thing is my journal. My verse for the day from the Bible. Checking in with myself. How am I doing? Am I good? Am I okay? Do I have a headache? Am I happy? And then my goals. How are my goals doing? Am I focusing on my goals? Am I... I write with my goals, are things going well? That's how you then start to move around and rebrand yourself in the new year, taking what 2020 has taught you. All right, so we have uh, Amina just joined us. Good morning. Let me know what time it is on your side. Sipati saying, for me, getting closer to God has helped me with my anxiety and focus on my personal goals and journaling best for me. It is honestly the best. Good morning, Dion. Raj is also here. I think most of us discovered a lot about ourselves. Definitely self-discovery and also discovering that we like to take care of ourselves. A lot of people didn't take care of themselves before 2020. But now, 2020 was just like, babe, babe, you cannot walk around with those toenails. It's not okay. Take some time for yourself. Just 10 minutes. Cut your toenails. It's nice. It's nice to have short toenails. It really is. So, um, uh, Seb was saying, in High Kapanon, 2020 taught me to leave things to God too. Yes, there's so many things in his hands. Um, Bridget, Bridget, let me know if I'm saying your name right. 
is saying morning good people and we also have new people joining us so glad to hear it from sylvie congratulations right Dee. i want to know <gasps> you guys are always leaving me out of these conversations in the morning <sighs> 2020, but rightly, I closed 2020 by starting a YouTube channel after years. Yes, I saw your YouTube channel and I'm subscribed. Congratulations on your YouTube channel, rightly. And we also have somebody who just joined us as well. Danelle, press it whenever you want to. Yes, press the restart button whenever you want to. Diana saying 2020 was the year of introspection and getting in touch with God and finding things that I love to do. That is the best part. Actually realizing the things that you love and discovering yourself, right? So, um, let's continue with number five. So, here's where the big change comes in. Number five, people learned a very big one, and that is career power. Are you really in charge of your career? A lot of the times, it's no. I'm going to let this thing in. Okay, I'm going to take this slow. Many people realized whether they're small fish, medium fish, or big fish in their careers. We got to realize how much power our employers have. And even if you're in a business, you started to realize how much your business relies on you being there. Therefore, really, you're not, you're not, you're not an entrepreneur, you know, you're just self-employed. You're employed by all the people who are there. So... Your business cannot run without you. You don't have a business. You're just self-employed. And when you stop working, you stop making money. But people who can stop working and still make money, those are the real entrepreneurs. Those are the people with real businesses. So you realize your career power and whether you're in charge or not. Because some businesses completely stopped because they couldn't go on. While other businesses, they pivoted. You know what it means to pivot? Keep one foot down and just change direction. And there were people who were able to do that in their businesses. And some people in their careers, they started to realize that this guy, my employer, can cut my salary whenever he feels like it. And I can have choice. I don't have a choice. This guy can go tell me to go work in a new location. And honestly, I don't have a say in this thing. I just have to do what he tells me to do. Whereas there are some people in their careers, they do have a say. They're like, no, actually, you know what? They have bargaining power. And it's because they both that bargaining power over time because they are a skilled employee, because they are a valuable person, and because should this person change or leave, it actually impacts the business in a way. They're the type of person that the employers want to keep because they're like, look, 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 if we lose this person, we are losing money. And we started to see where our career power is. So what are we going to do to rebrand ourselves in 2021? How do we learn from this? Put yourself in a position of power. Stop being a small fish and become a shark in your career in your business, and in your professional life. Even if you're in corporate or working for yourself, it doesn't really matter. Make sure that you're indispensable, that your value is unique and cannot be replaced, irreplaceable. That's how you make sure that no matter what happens, you're always in control, babes. You're always in control. You'll always be fine. So for everybody who learned to pivot their businesses in 2020, they know that moving forward, they're with the times. They are with the technology and nothing that can happen. They have built bulletproof businesses and built bulletproof careers. So how can you create a bulletproof career for yourself? Number six, you already have a brand, no matter whether you like it or not. This whole thing is about how we rebrand ourselves. And one thing you have to realize is that, babe, you already have a brand. You're already known for something. You're already the mom. Or you're already the stay-at-home mom. Or you're already the student. Or the lazy student. Or the person who works too hard. Or the God girl. You already have a brand. You're already known for something. People know you for something. What is it? You need to know that you have control over that brand. You have control of what people think or say about you. It is your narrative. What is your story? People know a little snippet of your story. The snippet that you're the content creator or you're, you're the girl in the long distance relationship or you're the girl who's always trying side hustles or you, you always give up on things too easily. That's a story that people know about you. And you actually had a part to play in creating that story. Whether you knew it when you were doing it or it was unconscious, that it just happened over time. Point is, you had a part to play in creating that story. And this just leads me to point number seven. 
Rebranding yourself is all about changing your focus. Deciding that, you know, there's a narrative about me that's out there. And this narrative is not 100% a lie. I, had con- I contributed to people knowing me in this way. So how do I rebrand myself for myself? What am I going to focus on? Instead of being the lazy girl who don't ask this person to do anything because she's just not going to do it. She's too lazy. This is about changing your focus and saying, I never used to focus on getting things done. But in 2021, I'm going to focus on finishing what I started. That's how you rebrand yourself. Whereas before, you were the person who had a short temper and no one wanted to talk to you because honestly, you're just an irritable person. And it's something that happened over time and you didn't know that that was your narrative that's been put out there. You change your focus and say that, you know what, I'm going to focus on being present. I'm going to focus on being polite. I'm going to focus on the conversations I have with people. So every time a person is in front of me, I'm going to focus on being the best version of myself for this person. Before, you used to focus on your books and just being the person who studies a lot. And now you're going to focus on being the ambitious go-getter, the goal-getter, the person who goes after things and actually makes things happen. Rebranding yourself is just about changing your focus. And a lot of, a lot of the times you don't know what you're focused on. We're just living our lives. We're just floating with whatever's happening. How about in 2021 we decide to actually focus and be deliberate and be intentional about the year that we set in front of us? So where was your focus and where do you want it to be now? For many of us, we didn't have a focus on anything. We were just doing whatever's in front of us. And now it is time for us to actually choose a focus and stick to it. And this leads me to finally number eight. There's one big thing that we learned in 2020 is that God is ultimately in control. He can change the weather. He can move a mountain. He can change people. He can take people from us. And he can leave us in the world for a reason. He's left us in this world for a reason. What it is, we still have to find out. But there are things that God still gives us the choice over. God moves things and he puts people in certain places for a reason. But he's given you the ultimate choice of what are you going to wake up and do with your day? That's up to you to decide. Whether you focus on him or not, that's up to you to decide. Whether you pray or not, that's up to you to decide. So how are you going to take things into Look at the things that God has given you, the choices that he's given you, the resources that he's given you, and make the most out of those resources. How are you going to choose to do your best every single day? Wake up and take every single talent that he's given you and multiply it. Because that's ultimately your choice. And when you move in the right direction, you'll start to see how he's going to just push you, push you along and make things happen for you. But if you move against it, it just feels hard. But it's ultimately your choice. Rebranding yourself in 2021 is ultimately your choice. So you have to decide. How greatly am I going to take these things that I've gotten and make the best out of them? All right, let's see what you guys are saying in the chat section. Sylvie, I'm about to take a bold step by going to a certain university. I'm guessing that's the whole word. I want to face those people. Um... So they tell me why they chose to fly in a spinning over me with Spanish lecture. Oh, yes. I'm so qualified. Yes. Why they chose a Spaniard over me for the Spanish lecturing position. I am so qualified. Yes, Sylvie. Go and inquire about it. Find out what it is. But honestly, it definitely does happen for a reason. Sometimes we think that when things don't happen in our direction or things don't happen the way that we want them to, that it is a failure or things didn't, you know, that they were supposed to go that way. But sometimes failure is not failure, it's just redirection. And maybe you've been directed to something greater and something better and something that you still have to see that still has to happen. So what redirection is it? Is it maybe you changing your perspective on the job or maybe is it you looking for a better opportunity? That maybe you might not be the lecturer, but you might be the head of the department. Who knows? Who knows? So real talk within Tabi, God is indeed in control. The fact that we woke up today means he trusts us to take today, uh, to make today the best. And then we have Asanda saying amen to that nice way to sit off the weekend. And 
How can I say in 2020, I started a YouTube channel to distract me from all of the mental health problems. I'm hoping 2021 will help me to rebrand and just change the way I look at myself. I like that. I love that. And always working through those things. I'm, I'm glad that you took it and made something great with it. So Lisa was saying, I'm here for a rebranding point. Rati saying, do it, Sylvie. I'm with you. Go for it, Sylvie. Promise. Yeah, 2020 wasn't a good year for everyone, but at least it made us tougher and not depend on others to do things for us. Yes. It made us also rely on the things that we can do to make them happen, to realize that we have the power to make things happen, not always relying on people. My mother always said, always put yourself in a position to be 100% in control of your failure or 100% in control of your success. You don't want to blame it on anybody else. Put yourself in a position where you don't point fingers at other people and only point fingers at yourself. All right, beautiful people. Thank you so much for joining. I'm so excited about this one. It is the end of the New Year, New Me series. Tomorrow we have a vlog and then we return to regular programming. Sunday is a cozy conversation. I'll be joining you on my cozy couch with my cozy cup of tea or my cozy hot water and my fruits. And we'll have a nice cozy conversation about going back to regular programming and the year ahead.